Hello and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Uh, the problem which we are going to see today is leaders in an array. So what do we mean by leaders? So an element is a leader if it is greater than all the elements to its right side. So it means uh, that suppose you are given this array. So uh, 17 is a leader here because it is greater than all the elements to the right side. So uh, this means that the uh, rightmost element will always be a leader because uh, it, it, it basically doesn't have any elements to its right. So like in this array, we also have a leader 5 because the element 2 to the right side is also smaller than the 5. So we have three uh, leaders in this array. So we basically have to uh, print these leader elements inside an array. So let's look at the solutions. So we will be discussing two solutions in this tutorial. Uh, the first one will be a simple and brute force algorithm where we will be using two loops. The outer loop will be running from uh, 0 to size minus 1 and it picks one by uh, one by one all the elements from left to right. So this is the uh, first loop. Then in the inner loop, we basically compare the uh, picked element in the uh, outer loop and we uh, compare this uh, picked element to all the elements to its right side. And if the picked element is greater than all the elements to its right side, then the picked element is a leader. If there is at least one element to its, uh, to its right side, which is uh, greater than the uh, picked element, then it's not a leader. So uh, this is the uh, code for the algorithm. So for the brute force algorithm, so we have an input array here. Uh, then we calculate the size. Then we call the function print leaders, which takes as an argument the array and its size. So let's come to print leaders function. In this function, we have the input array and the size. Then this is the outer loop. So in this loop, we are just uh, looping from 0 to size minus 1. And uh, then we uh, we have this inner loop here that, uh, see, uh, that actually runs from i plus 1 to size minus 1. And if it sees that if uh, there is element, any element uh, which is greater than the uh, current element, if there is, then it breaks. Otherwise, it doesn't break. So then after this uh, for loop here, we are basically checking the value of j if it's equal to size. That means that the loop didn't break. Then we uh, print that element saying that it's a majority, uh, it's a uh, leader of the array. Uh, okay, so uh, the time complexity of this algorithm will be order of n square. Uh, why? Because uh, we are running uh, two loops here and which are, are nested uh, inside one another. So that is very time complexity of order of n square. And it's a brute force algorithm, so that is not a recommended way uh, generally to uh, solve a problem. So then uh, we also have a better solution here, which is scanning from the right side. So we scan all the elements from right to left, and then we keep a track of the maximum till now. So whenever the maximum value changes, then that will be the um, and that will be basically the leader, and we will be printing its value. So we have the uh, same driver function here, uh, but the print leader function will have the uh, will have the change algorithm. So we firstly initialize the max from right value with the uh, rightmost element that will be size minus array of size minus one in this case. Then, as the rightmost element is always the leader, we uh, print that element first of all. Uh, after we are done with this, then we uh, run a loop from size minus two. Note that the element at size minus one has already been uh, processed. So, we start from size minus two till the zeroth index, and then we check if the maximum from right uh, is smaller than the array i from the current element. So if the maximum from right is smaller than the current element, then we update the uh, maximum from the right with the current element and then we print it. 
because that has to be a leader. So this algorithm also runs in the uh, this algorithm actually runs in the order of uh, time complexity of order of n, uh, which is really good because that's the uh, minimum possible time complexity, because uh, we are actually uh, just uh, processing n uh, one element once, and we do not even have a nested loop like in the previous case. So this is pretty good. So in summary, uh, we discussed two methods. The first one was a simple method where we were running two loops, and its time complexity was thus order of n square. But if we just scan from the right side, uh, and then in that method, the time complexity reduces to order of n, which is really good. So uh, that is all for this tutorial. Uh, you can visit this link uh, to find all the stuff discussed in this tutorial and to also run the code in the ID on the website itself. Thank you very much.